People ask me sometimes, what constitutes the law, as in the practice of law? You know, I've practiced for 22 plus years, and I am still daunted every time I think about walking into my first law library. There is so much that constitutes the law in this country, it is hard for me, even today, to get my mind wrapped around it. The law consists of statutes, constitutions, cases interpreting statutes and constitutions, regulations, rules, rules of evidence, rules of court, prior decisions, stare decisis, the list goes on and on and on. And if that isn't complicated enough, in this country we have at least 52 separate systems of law. We have 50 different states that have their own independent legal systems. We have the District of Columbia, and then over all of that, we have the federal system of law. When there is a conflict between a state's system of law and the federal system of law, the federal system preempts state law. In other words, it has more power than any one given state law. Every state has its own code. That is a collection of statutes that the legislature of that state has passed and which govern the people of that state. However, those state laws do not cross state borders. So if you live right on the border between Georgia and Tennessee, the law of those two states can vary wildly based upon a given factual circumstance. Then, in every single state, you've got the court system. The court system decides how the statutes are to be interpreted and to be applied. Every statute is written in words, but those words may mean different things in different circumstances and to different people. The courts are the ones who put meaning to the words that the legislature puts into the statute. The thing is, the statute and the decisions by the courts have equal weight. So you may have a statute that is worded in such a way that it means that you win your case. However, there could be many different cases that have interpreted that statute in a different way and means that you actually lose your case. On top of all of this in the state system, every state will have its own state constitution. That is a constitution, just like the United States Constitution, which grants rights to its citizens that cannot be taken away without due process of law. Every one of the state constitutions is different, which means that you have 50 different state constitutions as you travel across this country. To make matters even worse, you've got Louisiana, who just simply can't get with the rest of us and has a completely different system of law entirely, based on civil law as opposed to common law, which everybody else in their right mind follows. And then over all 50 states' system of government and laws, you have the federal government, and the federal system of constitutions, statutes, and courts. The federal system, as I said, preempts any contradictory state law. That means that every state law must abide by the federal constitution, and if there is a conflict between a state law and a federal law or a federal constitution, the federal system is always going to take priority. As I mentioned a moment ago, every state has its own court system. You're always going to have a court of general jurisdiction. That is a place where cases are tried, either to a jury or to a judge, and that is where the initial decision on the case comes from. And then there will always be a system of appeal. There's a court of appeals, a state supreme court usually in each state, although each state may call it something different. That's simply what we call it here in Georgia. And then again, as an additional layer on top of this, you've got the federal court system. The federal court system consists of many different districts within the 50 states, Guam, Puerto Rico, Washington, D.C., and any other territories where there might be a district court located. Those districts are courts of general jurisdiction. That's where you make your first decision on the case. On top of that are 13 different circuits in the federal court system. These are courts of appeal. Here in Atlanta, we have the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals. That is where cases from the U.S. District Court go to be heard on appeal. And above that, you've got the United States Supreme Court, which is the supreme law in the land. Whatever the nine justices of the Supreme Court says is the law, that's the law. Within the district court system, there are also specialty courts and administrative law courts, such as bankruptcy, immigration, veterans law, and patent and trademarks. These specialty courts are generally, but not always, headquartered in Washington, D.C. in what is called the D.C. Circuit. The D.C. Circuit also hears all cases originating from the District of Columbia because, as we know, the District of Columbia is not a state and doesn't have its own state system of courts. And almost like a cherry on top of this mountain of law and mountain of sources of law is the administrative system. 
Statutes that are passed by state or federal governments will also oftentimes authorize the existence of regulatory agencies, such as the Environmental Protection Agency, the Interstate Commerce, or Immigration and Naturalization. These agencies make their own rules, which are called regulations. And the regulations fit in between the statutes and the courts and govern a lot of the things that we have to do during our everyday lives, even though most of the time we don't know about them. These regulations can change very frequently. The regulations do not need to be passed by Congress or your state legislature, merely by the administrative agency which is making the rule. Because of this, these regulations change all the time, and even though you may not know about them, you are still governed by these regulations even when they change without you knowing about it. As you can see, the law consists of a ton of stuff. Nobody can possibly know everything there is to know about the law. So what do you do? You make sure that you find somebody who knows their little slice of the legal world in very great detail. Nobody's going to know everything, but some people can know most of everything within their own little slice. So as you can see, the law actually consists of a lot. I still, after 22 years, have a hard time getting my mind wrapped around just how broad everything is. But that's why you go to law school, because law school doesn't teach you the law so much as it teaches you how to teach yourself. Thank you.